Lesson 6.3b, Comparing Ratios. We can use equivalent ratios to solve real-world problems. We can also use equivalent ratios that have the same first or second term to make comparisons. And since a ratio can be written in fraction form, the first term will be the numerator and the second term will be the denominator. So we can think of equivalent ratios as equivalent fractions. We did those back in 5th grade math 6.4, and that's linked in the description if you need a review. Are the ratios 4 to 5 and 2 to 3 equivalent ratios? Let me think. We write them in fraction form, 4 to 5, 2 to 3, and we write their multiples. I'm going to look for a least common multiple to give them a common denominator, a common second term. And 5 times 3 is 15, so we need to multiply the numerator by the same thing. That means our new first term, our numerator, is going to be a 12. We do the same thing for 2 thirds. 3 times some number is 15, that's going to be a 5. So we have to multiply the 2 times 5. That's going to give us a 10 for our new first term. Now we can look at 12 fifteenths compared to 10 fifteenths. No, they're not equivalent ratios. They're not equivalent fractions. 12 fifteenths is greater than 10 fifteenths. In the school chess club, there are two sixth graders for every three seventh graders. In the school choir, there are five sixth graders for every eight seventh graders, which group has a greater ratio of sixth graders to seventh graders. We think chess, that's two sixth graders to three seventh graders, that's two thirds, and choir is five sixth graders to eight seventh graders. We change the important data into numbers and write the ratios as fractions. That means we're comparing two-thirds to five-eighths to find which has more sixth-graders than seventh-graders. Two-thirds compared to five-eighths. We think we need to find the LCM, the least common multiple, for three and eight that will be a common denominator for both ratios. It will be the common second term. We write out the multiples of three and the multiples of eight and the least common multiple is 24, so that's what we're going to use. And 3 times 8 is 24, so we need to multiply the 2 times 8. That means our new first term is a 16. And we have 8 times 3 is 24, so 5 needs to be multiplied times 3. That means our new first term is 15. We multiply the numerator by the same factor that we multiplied the denominator. And our question was which group has a greater ratio of 6th graders to 7th graders. That means which group has more 6th graders. And we can see chess has 16 and choir has 15. So the chess club has more 6th graders. It's got a greater ratio of 6th graders to 7th graders. Bob mixed five ounces of blue tint to two gallons of white paint to paint his room. And Dave mixed seven ounces of blue tint to three gallons of white paint to paint his room. Who has a greater ratio of blue tint to white paint? So we think Bob has a five to two ratio, or five halves. Dave has a seven to three ratio, or seven thirds. That's for Bob, five ounces blue to two gallons white compared to Dave's seven ounces of blue to three gallons of white. With a common denominator, the greater numerator represents more blue. So we need to give them a common denominator. And we can use six, the least common multiple for two and three, as the common denominator. And two times some number is six, that would be a three. Five gets jealous, it gets multiplied by three. That's gonna give us a 15 for our first term, our numerator, and 3 times 2 is 6, 7 wants to be multiplied by 2, and that gives us 14 for our new first term, our new numerator. Now we can compare them. We have 15, 6 compared to 14, 6. The numerator represents blue, 
we know Bob has a greater ratio of blue in his paint than Dave does. So for your notes, a ratio is a comparison of two quantities with the same units. So if we're comparing cups of pineapple juice to cups of orange juice, that would be a ratio. A rate is a comparison of two quantities with different units, 120 miles to two hours. So miles and hours are different units. A unit rate is a rate in which the second quantity is one. That would be going 60 miles in one hour. That's a unit rate. And a unit price is just a unit rate that involves money for a quantity of one, 35 cents for one apple. So now we're finished with the second part of 6.3. We're gonna move on to the third part, which is using rates to make predictions. I hope you have a great day and hit that like button and I'll see you next time. Bye.